Hello YouTube, it's Arai and Caitlin over here. Uh, we're walking our dogs right now. It just started to snow over here in Milwaukee. Uh, it is about four o'clock on January 1st, New Year's Day. Uh, we are masked up because we've been exposed to COVID unfortunately. So uh, even though we're walking outside, we're gonna go ahead and just make sure we're taking the proper precautions there. Uh, we're waiting on test results from yesterday still, um, but we are having some symptoms. So uh, we're just gonna be careful. But obviously we have to go outside because we have to walk our dogs. So. Uh, here we are. Uh, so we're, we're over on our street here. Teddy is finding a really nice sniff spot, I guess. Uh, basically, we just wanted to uh, start a video here on uh, document since it just began snowing. You can see a little bit of accumulation starting on the ground. Uh, you got the ID4 street parked over here. Some snow accumulating on there as well. Uh, we wanted to start documenting uh, just how the ID4 performs in snow since this is our first real snow. Um, I did drive the ID4 when there were some flurries last week or quick maybe dusting of snow. Um, it handled pretty well in that, but uh, we are using the stock tires, which I've heard are kind of hit or miss with this car. So uh, we are gonna have to see how that goes. Um, well, I, I would say most of the time it's a miss <laughs> uh, from what I've been reading. Uh, but because we live in a city, streets you know do get plowed and salted. So maybe that'll be somewhat different. Um, I guess we will see. So yeah, the point of the video is gonna be to see how the ID4 handles in snow. We'll probably take it for a little bit of a drive later since we're quarantining here anyway, uh, and see how it performs once we get some accumulation. I believe they're expecting about six inches of snow up to in Milwaukee, uh, I think south. We're, we're kind of on a dividing line, so we might get more, we might get less, um, depending on how the lake is, because we're so close to the lake here. Like we are literally a couple blocks from the lake, uh, so that'll play an impact on how much snow we get. Um, and then we're gonna see how the ID4 uh, handles in the snow as well. So obviously we wanna be safe so we're gonna drive when it's like whiteout conditions, but we do wanna see, maybe go on some side streets and see the accumulations on the roads and how the ID4 picks up, how it turns, you know, all of that. We'll kind of share that um, as we go, so stay tuned. So real quick here, I did also wanna just document that as of yesterday, when we got back from charging the car to 80%, we are at 77% full as of yesterday. So this is about 24 hours ago. Um, when we take the car, we'll see how much um, it dropped since 1231, uh, or in December 31st, uh, at about 6 p.m., and we'll see how much uh, battery state the car lost, since we are looking at, let's see, what is it right now? It is 23 degrees out here, so we'll see if the car actually loses any battery charge uh, in the cold weather, since this is going to be some of the coldest weather we have this year so far, um, because we are going to see... Um, I, what is it gonna drop to tomorrow? I think like single digits tomorrow night. Uh, so the snow is probably gonna freeze, you know, so we're gonna wanna make sure that all the snow is off the car and everything, take it for that ride. Um, and yeah, so we'll, we'll document how, how much the battery loses in the cold weather. Uh, I have been noticing, I will, uh, an upcoming video will show how um, when I go to work in the morning, it does take uh, a stupid amount of energy to go just the two miles because the car is working on warming up. So I can probably be a little more efficient with that and maybe go to work without climate control on so it's not sucking that battery life out for only a two mile ride. Um, but yeah, we will go ahead and uh, and get back with you with more details when we have them. All right, so it snowed here in Milwaukee. We've got about, I think three to four inches on the ground. Uh, hard to say exactly for sure. I don't have a ruler, not a meteorologist despite the one class I took in college. Um, here's the ID4, we do street park it. I think I've mentioned that in some other videos. Uh, we're gonna be moving into a new place that hopefully has a garage and or a charger. Um, basically, just wanna go over kind of where it's at. I haven't driven it since Friday night. It's now Sunday at about, what is it, four o'clock? Something like that. So sun's gonna be setting in like 20 minutes here because it's really depressing. Um, so here, the mirror just popped out for me. That's salt all over the side here from all the plows. This car is taking a beating. Look at this. Oh man, we're gonna car wash or something. So got my trusty uh, Costco snow shovel here. Because I'm so close to the car, because I'm so close to the car, it has started uh, the heat on the inside. So we'll see what our battery percentage has been since it's been sitting here since uh, since Friday, uh, since we've been isolating due to a possible COVID exposure. So we haven't really gone anywhere. We got tested on Friday. That was the last time we drove the car. Got some ice on the windshield here. For viewers from Florida, this is what you're this is what you're missing out on. This good old Wisconsin, you know, pushing the snow up your car. This isn't very much snow. We've, we're used to a lot more than uh, than this. But as long as we get it off our windshield, it looks like we got a little bit of ice that we gotta have to deal with as well. I think it's the first time I've had to use the ice scraper on the windshield, isn't it? <laughs> it is. 
All right, so we got some accumulation here underneath the wipers. This is not, this is what I don't like about some of these uh, designs here. I think once we get the wipers going, things should be good. Let me just check. So this side looks good, actually. There's not much snow on the windows. This is a very light and fluffy snow. We usually get pretty wet and, you know, heavy snow. So we got a little lucky here. Like, you look on this side of the car, no snow accumulated at all. I have shown uh, my old car, my Honda, uh, when it went heavy like that, uh, we had a lot of, um, like when it went heavy snow came, this would take a lot longer to get out of, but you can see, we'll see how the ID4 conforms with the rear wheel drive. This is the first edition, um, in case you guys weren't aware of that already. Let's see how it gets out of the spot. It's, this is not nearly the worst snow I've gotten out of. Uh, this is pretty light in comparison. We've gotten plowed in so hard that it goes up, you know, our door, we literally can't even get in the car. Uh, with past cars so this is the first time we're hitting snow 94. the roads are pretty clear as you can see right now um but we're gonna try to take it somewhere where there's still is snow on the roads i think some of the side streets still have it we'll kind of see how the car performs as well all right so we just hopped in the car here uh we got we're gonna look and see what our battery percentage is at now that uh it's been sitting here since friday so we uh we left it here on the street 77 percent whoa Holy cow, so this car, I have not used the car since Friday. It does not like the cold weather, ladies and gentlemen. We're down to 58%. I'm telling you right now, I was expecting maybe five or 10% to go down. That is a lot. So we're gonna start driving it around. What I have heard, <laughs> which I hope is the case, because this is gonna be a long winter. Um, I Okay, I'm honestly a little bit mind blown right now. Um, it's only 26 degrees right now. It did drop below 20 degrees last night. Um, 25 degrees now, as you saw that tip down there. But that, that's discouraging. I'm not gonna lie, 19% loss. Now what I have heard is once the battery does warm up, that some of that energy should come back and some of it's just not usable. But we're gonna test that out because we're about to drive the car around. I'm mind blown, that's, that's okay. We're gonna, we're gonna cross our fingers and hope that, <laughs> cause if we do this every single time it gets cold out and worry about this range, we don't have a place to plug it in overnight. So we're gonna see how this goes. Cause we're again, trying to share all this information with you. Um, that is, <sighs> I'm honestly at a loss for words. That's pretty wild. So let's start driving it. We'll see if we regain any of that percentage here. So we're at 115 miles on the gasometer right now. I forgot what that was. I think we were at, if I look at my screenshot that I took the other day, so this is what we are at as of Friday night. We are at 77%. We have not touched the car or driven the car since then. We had 157 miles of guesstimated range. And this is where we're at now that it got stupid cold out. I'm assuming that the ID4, oh, here's a snowplow going by as well. Getting more salt on the side of my car, but thank you, snowplow. Um, but <laughs> I expected the cold weather to to hurt the car's battery, but that is, that is wild. Ken, what are your thoughts on that? Does that give you confidence in winter driving an EV right now? I'm excited to see how we uh, manage it. <laughs> I mean, we don't have any error messages on the dashboard, which is good. No. Obviously cold weather is gonna hurt it, but but man, if you don't have a garage for this that keeps this car toasty and warm, um, that's pretty wild. One other thing I just wanna show as well, if you do need to use the defroster, like we might have to too, because we see the some ice still on here. Some of it's starting to melt already. But I just wanna show you, so we're at 115 miles of guesstimated range. This is something that I was testing out before, but if we hit the max defroster here, that range drops. Uh, now we'll come back when we turn off the defroster, um, but we're just gonna let you know the windshield melt a little bit. We have the rear wheel drive version that does not have the heated windshield uh, like the all wheel drive version does. So my dad is well, looking to get that car right now, or he has an order in already. So his will have the heated windshield. So we'll have to compare how that how that goes. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm a little discouraged that this has lost 20% over two days. I mean. When I, I, I will preface this with, this is not normal idle. Um, the, it's not normal for the battery to lose this much on idle. I would say, I think I went a couple days without driving the car when it was a lot warmer out and we didn't lose 1%. And I've seen a lot of people in Volkswagen groups on Facebook saying they left their car at the airport for two weeks, the car didn't lose 1%. So, <laughs> and we just dropped another percent. So now we're at 57. So probably because we have the defroster on and, and heat's starting to activate. We are at uh, 60 degrees heat and this would normally leave uh, in the car, we do uh, utilize that instead of having that 65 or 70 degrees, we do have it at uh, with with the seat warmers on versus not having it on, having a, a higher temperature. Yeah, we'll we'll start driving here. We'll see how this goes, but that is discouraging. That's lost that much power. Um, I will say that's not a good start for uh, winter driving. It's something that we definitely have to account for now. Um, that's that's wild. Uh, at this point, 
if this doesn't come back, I can't imagine recommending this car um, if you do not have a place to plug it in overnight to maintain the charge that it's at. Um, and if you, especially if you're parking on the street outside, because if you're parking in a warm heated garage, it's a whole other story. But yeah, we'll see how this goes. We're gonna start driving it, see if we get any of this energy back, because I have heard, I, I don't know if that's true or not. I haven't seen any science or, true, you know, a lot, a lot of stuff to back that up, but um, I guess we will see how it goes. So here we are. We're on Milwaukee Lakefront, Bradford Beach, right across the street from us. Uh, we thought we'd just take the car out to a, a spot where there hasn't been much plowing yet. You can see some cars have gone through here. I think a lot of people like taking a walk on the icy cold beach here. They did do the polar plunge here. Was it yesterday or two? Yesterday, right? Yep, for, for New Year's Day. Crazy people go in there and they submerge themselves. They don't have wetsuits on, nothing. And it's like 20 degrees out and they jump in the frigid cold lake. Lake might actually be a little bit warm than the air temperature, but that's besides the point. So we got the ID4 here, obviously. Um, you can see just driving through the parking lot, you can see how much snow these tires have picked up. Again, these are not winter tires, so this is going to be... I'm more so testing uh, not only the ID4 performance, but I'm also going to be testing just the uh, Bridgestone Alenzas that came with the car. Um, so with that, uh, obviously, if you live in a place where they don't plow roads as well, you know, in terms of li not living in an urban environment or anything like that, um, you can see Lincoln Memorial Drive here along Milwaukee. Um, they have plowed that really well. So for most people here, all season tires are okay. If you live in a, you know, mountainous terrain or anywhere where uh, snow does accumulate and maybe you need uh, a little more traction because like you look right down here, this is, this is slick. I mean, this is some light and fluffy snow, which is arguably a little bit more, uh, how do I say, a little more slippery to, uh, to drive on. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, I've got my GoPro set up in the car. Uh, and we're gonna go ahead and try to see, you know, how the ID4 uh, performs in the snow. We're gonna see when these wheels lock up because this is just the rear wheel, rear wheel drive only. We don't have the option to turn off, turn off traction control this time. Um, so we'll kind of see how it goes. All right, you guys, welcome to the inside of the ID4. Uh, so we've got my GoPro set up right behind me here so you can kind of see my whole uh, my whole front. I might move it up here uh, for maybe a next video or something like that so you can see outside. I do have Caitlin recording outside as well. Uh, so we'll be able to kind of see how the car performs on the outside. Uh, I just want to show you kind of what things look like on the driver's side here. So I've just put the car into D. We're about to drive through this uh, road that was previously untraveled. And we're going to see how this guy picks up. So I just gunned it and it's already slipping quite a bit. So see how this goes. But... Uh, so I just went through, not putting full force because until I get to know the car, but I'm gonna brake and pull a, pull a left here so that it's a little bit slippery. All right, we're gonna try to go back. So a lot of, a lot of slippery icons up here. So I'm gonna test this guy out. I'm gonna try to do a full stop. Pretty solid actually. The braking seems pretty good. I think the issue is gonna be getting up and going because I keep getting the slip icon up here. Um, so let's try to do another, you know, quick, without braking this time. Got a little bit of drifts. Kind of see how that went. That was actually an intentional drift in the back uh, rear wheel there. And here we are slipping again, so I'm gonna go ahead and try. We're going 15 miles an hour, we're gonna turn. And there we go. Woo -hoo! Yeah, sure does slip quite a bit. Um, I think that's to be expected. I definitely feel it in the rear wheel, uh, the rear wheel drive, you know, a little bit more than I would like a front wheel drive, for example. But yeah, we're gonna try right here. Woo! <laughs> Those got 360 degrees there. Oh boy, that was fun. Um, but yeah, I'm just obviously this is not like a you know determinant of a real life scenario. Uh, for example, how you should be driving this car. Um, I do want to do a video on that as well. Yeah, this is a. Uh, very interesting but I'm gonna just see so we're gonna bring the car to a complete stop and I just want to test you know this is a this is a part of the road where um, where it, you know cars have driven over I just want to see how it picks up so I'm gonna I'm honestly just gonna so let's let's get a little so right away under five miles an hour we slipped a little bit once we get going still showing the slip icon traction control so now I'm gonna gun it a little bit and there it goes slipping again <laughs> we're definitely not getting full power because the car refuses to provide a full power let's try going the other way now yeah, so we do get a little bit of a, a little bit of a slip here. Now let's just try to drive it. I'm gonna try to try to drive it straight through the snow. 
see how this goes. And then we'll come to a complete stop in this unplowed part. Ooh, we slipped there quite a bit. That was not even on purpose, so. Do a quick U-turn. Yeah, I can feel those wheels locking up on me in the back um, to try to regain that traction. So definitely very slippery. Can't tell if I, those are the drum brakes kicking in or or what that is over there, but it's interesting. You can see how this, you know, if I just do quick little. Oh yeah, that bad. <laughs> Woo! Try taking this on a curvy road. Am I right? Got a truck over here. I'm gonna try not to hit. All right, we're in the unplowed territory again, so I'm gonna try to. Kind of just winging this. I didn't really have a plan for what we were doing coming out here, but I just kind of wanted to see. Woo! <laughs> that was a fun one. Oh boy. Yeah, you know, it's. I, I definitely feel these. I think these tires might be accumulating more snow than we thought, but let's see if we can get this guy to drift again. <laughs> again, this is not the performance version of the ID4. If you want that, you're all wheel drive. But I've got the full gas right now. Let's go. All right, let's try reverse. All right, one more little stretch here. Oh yeah, we're we're stuck right now. Ah, uh, not quite, kind of stuck. So we'll ease the gas pedal into here. Definitely took it at the time. I was clicking that gas pedal as if it was like a button. Um, so we're still slipping, 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 slipping. So at least what the traction control says. I'm gonna try this again. Yeah, this traction control is just locking up those wheels in the back. I'm trying to hit the, the gas to get it out of here, but this, I'm like, I'm pressing the gas to the metal right now and I'm not getting power. So this traction control is really limiting the type of power we get. So uh, it is kind of strange to feel that. So we're gonna do one more, one more lap around here and I think we should be good. Definitely don't wanna eat up too much, too more of our charge here. You just feel that snow. That's a nice skid. So yeah, all in all, these tires are slippery. They they don't gain very much traction. I'm pressing the gas pedal. Okay, so let's stop it right now. I'm just gonna see how I can get myself out of this. So I'm pressing the gas pedal and the car's not going. So I'm, I'm pressing pedal to the metal right now, just as an example. So if I move my tires around, yeah, we're pressing the pedal to the metal, just trying to get some traction here and we're not doing it. So uh, this is only about three or four inches of snow maybe. But we're we're getting that uh, that wheel's just locking up on us, and the car's limiting power on purpose for safety reasons, I would presume. Uh, but yeah, we're gonna do another. Oh boy. So yeah, I think this is uh, I think that's what we've got here. But uh, let's show off for Kayla one more time here. <laughs> Definitely not the type of car you want to rev your engine with, uh, or, or hear like you know if you want to hear some satisfaction like that. But and you're not going to be getting all your power like you expect either. As you can tell, it's slowing down. I'm pressing pedal to metal just you know trying to get this thing to go in circles. But yeah, just, you just don't get the power. You just don't get the power. So what have we learned? We've learned the car takes a huge, huge drop in energy um, when you are uh, in these cold climates like this. So we lost 20% in two days of not driving the car uh, in sub-freezing sub temperatures. 
and that's only the 20s. I don't even want to know what it's like when we're getting to the negatives uh, over here. So we definitely do that. Our polar vortex is coming. We get one every year. It's usually late January, early February. You can have to see, but uh, very interesting how the car, um, I did notice it limits the energy. I was pressing all the way on the gas pedal and the car just wouldn't give me the energy, which is because of the traction control, not necessarily a limitation of the car or the battery. Uh, I'd be curious to see how the all-wheel drive car, um, you know, performs on this. Obviously, you get a lot better traction on those. Um, but I, I would say if you have a rear-wheel drive car and you're in a climate where they don't plow very well or something like that, you got to get those winter tires. I was having trouble on this flat parking lot getting power to my car, and I'd have to move my wheels around. So that is, uh, th that's concerning, I will say. I will say this is about as concerned as I've been with the ID4 since I've gotten it in September. Um, this winter weather is... Uh, is nothing to laugh at with EVs and uh, in terms of the energy consumption, battery, all that. But all in all, is it fun? Still, still fun to drive? Absolutely, it is. But you just got to know, you know, if I wouldn't even want to try, well, I might have to at some point, but trying to go up a hill in this when it's snowy, I don't think you're going to make it up. I'm going to be 100% with you. If I can't even get across this unplowed, I don't know how you're going to make it up a hill. So, Winter tires are a must if you're in a hilly environment that doesn't get uh, doesn't get snowed on very often. This this is really insightful to know, you know, uh, how how the how this car performs. And again, this is the rear wheel drive model. All wheel drive might be better, uh, even with the all seasons. But uh, rear wheel drive in the back with all season tires, do not recommend it. Uh, I'm gonna stick with all seasons for now, so so maybe I can afford to get a pair of winter tires, or if it gets really bad and I have no other option, but. Um, most of my driving I do is on interstates where it's plowed and everything. Um, I don't drive in the snow that much really. This is kind of my off-peak time of driving in the year. So I'm a little less concerned. I think it's, you're going to be fine as long as you're uh, you know, not trying to drive in inches of snow like this. I mean, this is uh, a lot of snow. So I mean, something to consider if you're, if you're in an environment, like I said, where rear-wheel drive might not be your best option. But thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys, you know, Gain something from this video. Uh, I'm, a, I'm the thing I'm most disappointed about is that 20% drop in battery life. Not even in range. That's just the pure energy it drops. Probably trying to keep the battery warm. I have to do a little more research on that to know for sure. But um, all in all, still happy with ID4. But winter winter performance on in terms of the battery is, uh, and that's probably an EV standard. That's probably gonna happen with a Tesla too. It probably gonna happen with a Mustang. Probably gonna happen with anything uh, in terms of that energy drop. But this thing. Very little traction when you're on pure snow. So, But again, thanks for watching. Hope you guys gained something. Let me know if you have comments in the description. I'm sure we can get more snow, more tests, probably even deeper snow we can try and see if this thing will even budge in. But um, if you have any more questions, please let me know. Peace.